So before I start this video, I would like to address a couple of things. The first is that some of my fans are hosting an online tournament on Dueling Network called Special Apps Mission. You can find more information in the description of this video about it. I'm not actually the one hosting it, although some of the prizes for the tournament include the chance to play me on Dueling Network and um, suggesting a video, things like that. But if you want more info and you want to sign up, again, just check the description. It's all there. Um, I believe it's in the middle of May, so I'd just like for you guys to check that out and I thought I'd formally announce it. The second thing is in regards to some of the comments on recent videos. So, I know that for the past couple of weeks I've been uploading a lot of stuff and a lot of it has been deck profiles, duels, and some pack openings, and not everybody seemed to enjoy that. I don't mind people disliking videos. I understand that it's the internet and you can't possibly hope to please everybody, and you can't expect people to be nice and supportive in the comments all the time. And it's anonymous, there's venom, that's how it goes. But I would like to say that just because you don't like a video doesn't mean that you have to flame a video, and so I'll explain this a little bit more. Um, with deck profiles, remember that the person giving the deck profile is giving their interpretation, their take on a deck. So what you're seeing, their card choices are catered to their playstyle and their preferences, and it works for them. And um, I just it isn't really productive to leave harsh comments saying you know this build sucks, this player sucks, he doesn't know what he's doing and not even provide any sort of real justification for it. If you're going to insult people or, you know, criticize their deck, at least, you know, suggest improvements, explain why you think a certain card choice doesn't work or why you think their build is bad. Um, and I'm not even going to go into the swearing because I don't do that. But um, next is dual videos. I understand that some of the dual videos I've uploaded recently tend to have a lot of, like, horrible misplays. Um, normally, I trust the people that I'm recording to play their decks well, so when they don't do it, it you know, it disappoints me as well. Um, but you don't, again, have to be super harsh in the comments. You can just point out that there was a misplay here, this is why, and that's all that kind of needs to happen. And something to note about the dual videos, and especially the deck profiles, is that I'm not the only person who looks at the comments of these um, videos. The people who put up the deck profiles, and a few of the people who like are recorded in the duels, they look at the comments too. They, you know, might have softer feelings, or they might just be looking for some constructive criticism, but when they just see things like this sucks, that doesn't really help anybody. So hopefully you'll reconsider what you post in the comments, or at least how you post it for decks and duels. And regarding pack openings, I know I've been doing some of those lately. First of all, and I think this is really silly, I'm not trying to be simply unlucky. Everybody seems to think that just because I might get really excited when I pull something good. I mean, I love his channel to death. I'm actually a Simply Unlucky fanboy. You can call it brown nosing if you want, but I like everything he does. I think he's a wonderful YouTuber. And I do try to model my pack openings after his, but I'm not trying to be him. And also, just because I pull good cards does not mean that I scaled my packs. I don't scale packs. I don't have any reason to do that. So please, just because I pull a few good cards doesn't mean like I'm scaling to get exciting videos. And that's all I had to say, so on a more positive note, let's get to the actual video, which is seven cards that I think need to get reprinted fast. So we finally got like the Levolvel Chain reprint, and we've been getting a few nice reprints, and we've gotten the introduction of things like Megaton that kind of are doing these mass reprints, but there are still some cards that are lingering around that really, really, really need to see like another printing. These are in no particular order, so we're just gonna kind of let it rock. The first card is Emergency Teleport. So, um, <laughs> Ritual Beasts really need this card. Um, it, you know, it's not mandatory for the deck to work, but let's face it, if you want this deck to be more consistent and a little bit faster, you need to have Emergency Teleport. And the thing is, Emergency Teleport's only been printed once, and then it got printed again in Legendary Collection 5Ds, but it's kind of a tough card to pull. Honestly, the card at this point needs to just be a common, in my opinion, like make it a common in a structure deck, or even, you know, just some other kind of reprint set, like a battle pack. It doesn't just help Ritual Beast too. Like, I mean, there are lots of other decks that can use Emergency Teleport. Any actual Psychic deck can use it, and there are a few others. I'm sure you guys can think of examples. I just feel like the card has been out, I mean, since what, 2009? So I really think that it's long overdue. Next is Lightning Chidori. So um, this card isn't nearly as old as Emergency Teleport, but the card, uh, it's getting pretty high up there. At $20, $30 for, you know, an Xyz that you need to have in certain decks feels a bit unreasonable. I mean, it's not archetype specific, I get it, but 
Still, um, Yosinju need it, Harpies need it, um, increasingly other random wind decks can use it as well. And I just feel like, honestly, um, every other Xyz seems to be pretty easy to get. Konami seems to be trying to make Xyz monsters in general not the problem. They're trying to make the extra deck relatively cheap because they reprinted things like Eggs Tonight, Silent Honor Arc twice, Final Little Ball Chain. So I think that Chidori is um, long due for a reprint, uh, possibly again in a battle pack. Maybe a Mega Ten, something like that. Next is Medolce Angeli. Um, this card's been out, uh, well, it came out last year, but the thing is, like, Medolce is kind of a rogue deck. I know a lot of people want to build it. It's gotten a little bit popular as a rogue deck lately. Um, it's something that I'd like to build in real life if I could, but Angelis are still about $20 and just generally a bit tough to find. So, um, reprinting them would be nice, especially because we've had, like, TR Misu get reprinted, what, twice now? like in Gold Series and in some Astral Pack or something. So I don't really see why things like Tiaramisu need to get reprinted that many times so we still don't have a copy of Angeli, which is pretty crucial to the combos. It's the lone fire of the deck. Next is Majesty Speed. I know this card is kind of newer, but still something to keep in mind is that it's a pretty generic card that's useful for a lot of decks and it's great for countering the meta. And anytime that we can get something that counters the meta reprinted, that's usually a good thing. Um, not all the time, but usually. So I think that Majesty Spin would be nice. There are a lot of players who want to maybe play around with it in a tribute-based deck, like Tribute Stun or a Monarch variant, but they can't always do that because, you know, only the players with money can really get their Majesty Spins and run them, and that doesn't feel fair. Now, I know Majesty Spin's price has gotten really high and then sort of tapered off a bit, but it's still a secret rare, and, you know, no matter what you say, secret rares are going to be tough to get a hold of, no matter what, so. Um, I think the Majesty Spin would be a nice, easy card to get reprinted. Next is Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. So, um, Burning Abyss are sort of falling out of style, so I feel like this is probably incoming pretty soon anyway. But, um, I do think it'd be nice, like, Dante's are still about $50 that I know of, and so that doesn't, uh, you know, that's still a really hefty price for somebody who wants to play Burning Abyss. And it feels even more unfair when you consider that all the Burning Abyss monsters are otherwise just rares and Fire Lake is a super and a promo. So really the only expensive cards, I guess, aside from Virgil, and I suppose you could include him in this list, but I'm mainly going with Dante because he's the more popular one. Um, it just feels kind of unfair that you need literally one or three copies of one card that's a secret when everything else is rare. Kind of reminds me of Dragon Rulers when um, they were all rares and then like Big Iron Drake or something. Anyway, so yes, Dante could definitely afford to be reprinted, but I actually think he's on the way fairly soon because Burning Abyss is solar starting to fizzle. Next is Dinko Seca. Um, another card, it's from New Challengers, I think. I know it's kind of still recent, so I don't expect this to happen anytime soon, but it would be nice to see a reprint of the card. I know that with the reprint, some people think that maybe the card to get limited. I know that there are some controversial views on that. I'm not here to discuss whether or not the card needs to get banned or limited or anything like that, but I do think it'd be nice if it was more accessible for some of us. Um, it feels a bit unfair that some people who might want to do something interesting with Dinko Seca or use it in maybe a Thunder deck or something like that, or just use it in a lower tier deck, have to fight with the people, like the Necroz players, the Shadal players, for you know to get copies of a card that's kind of tough to find. And its price is so zany because it changes with the meta that it just feels like it'd be nice if the card was a little bit more accessible for everybody. Next card is Digusto Emerald. Um, I know this card got reprinted in a star pack, but it was like really tough to find in that star pack. I think that was star pack three? I don't know. What, two, two or three. Anyway, um, Digusto Emerald is not like a super, super staple in extra decks, but the card is useful. And in rank four spam, which seems to be the, just the kind of most popular de facto deck, for everybody, because there's so many different engines and ways to use it. That goes to some things that you want to have in your extra deck. It's just good. It recycles cards, and if you have a normal monster deck, then it really helps to have a copy of that goose emerald. And it's actually unfair again to the players who want to play some sort of vanilla deck and need to get copies of that goose emerald. But the card is tough to find. I wouldn't quite put it as high as the Volvo Chain was, but it's you know it's not far behind it. So. I think that it would be nice to see Diagusta Emerald just get reprinted as an easy to get common or, you know, something like that. The last card on my list is number 11, Big Eye. Um, like Diagusta Emerald, it got reprinted. Um, this time it was in a battle pack. It was in battle pack two round two, which is like one of the most elusive ones, honestly. Like you can find battle pack one, you can find battle pack two round one, and like battle pack three, but you don't find two round two. So, um, 
I would like to see Big Eye get reprinted. It's kind of tapered off in popularity now, so it's not like every deck needs it. So I just think it would be nice to be able to get it more easily. Um, it'd be great. Um, and that pretty much concludes my list. There are loads of other cards that could have made the list, but I just decided to do the seven that I could think of quickly off the top of my head. Um, what are some of yours? What cards do you guys think need to be reprinted? There are loads of cards that need to get reprinted for the sake of you know people being able to get them, but then there are cards that need to get reprinted just so that we can have them in a different and probably nicer rarity. And I might make a video separately about that. But anyways, that again concludes what I have to say. Um, Remember the things that I mentioned at the beginning of the video when you're leaving hateful comments. I'm not saying everybody does. I support everybody who leaves thoughtful, encouraging comments or even constructive comments that also are, you know, actually constructive and not just critical. So, um, that's the video for today. I know I've been uploading a lot recently, but I'm going to try to get back into discussions and skit type stuff more. I know I've been doing deck profiles and duels, so I'm going to try to get back to what Team APS is more known for. But anyways, that's today's video. This went on long, you guys obviously know why. Um, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch for live streams, which I hope to be doing much more soon. School's been crazy too. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya.